This episode of Watch Out for Fireballs is brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. And Jack in particular. Thank you, Jack. Uh, if you'd like to join our patrons, if you'd like to suggest an episode, all those things, you can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. And uh, on with the episode. Stay inside. Save lives. Wash your hands. Let's get through this. <laughs> Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we are talking about Luigi's Mansion, which is a survival horror game developed and published by Nintendo for the GameCube in 2001. Yeah, and this is an executive produced episode Mm -hmm. by Jack. Thanks, Jack. This is a delightful game. (laughs) Yeah, good, uh, good. Good pick. This is a real good pick. (laughs) <laughs> this is, you know, this whole time I was like, am I immune to charm? Do I not like charm? Do Does Gary charm not have bad? a soul? Does is Gary, the, is, yeah, people on the internet say it. Is the, you is, didn't like Mario <laughs> RPG, you soulless fuck. Is, is, have the lights behind Gary's eyes truly gone out? Yeah. <laughs> or are those things that you guys consider charming not nearly charming enough? <laughs> I need industrial grade Luigi's Mansion charm. This thing is a gold I, standard as regards charm and specifically charm that is like directly, I think, aimed at our shared sensibilities. It's a lot of things. Like I, I, I have a lot of things to say about the charm of this, and that that's one hundred percent true. It is a specific charm. It's also like I don't know if this will become a network axiom, but one of the things I was thinking about a lot while playing this is charm last six hours. <laughs> yep. I mean, I mean it. Like, yeah. would this game be good if it was twice as long? No, oh, no, no. Like, it would get it would get really boring. Uh huh. Um, like th- this is a really great game. I really loved this. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved it because it was a bite sized experience. If this were twice, it wasn't like I like yeah. this. I just want more of it. Uh, even toward the end, it was wearing just a little bit thin. I've got some problems with the pacing on this bad boy right here, but I yeah. do not. I do not disagree with what you're saying in uh, in principle. Yes, it it is just this is how long the story should be, mm-hmm. and it's one of the ways that like Luigi's Mansion, you know, this GameCube 2001 game is crazy ahead of its time. Yeah, um, you know, and and was was hated in its time, mm-hmm. or, you know, rejected <laughs> in its time, and kind of gained you know appreciation later yeah and i think that like now it's just like this is the game of 2020 mm-hmm. like this six like right now when everyone is like losing their mind over animal crossing like <laughs> just kind of a charming you know bite-sized low stress experience mm-hmm. this is like 20 years ahead of its time yeah you yeah. know very, and very it cool. was it was reviled in its time for some of the things that we are going to be praising it for specifically uh it's you know short length and it's novelty yeah you know um, so it's a 21 year old Gary was wrong <laughs> and 39 year old Gary is correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just in kind of in general. Yeah. No, it is yeah. all purpose. <laughs> you know, what yeah. a fucking idiot he was. <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. um, so in this game, you play as Luigi, uh, who is related to Mario. He, he, and you he, are, he is, he is tall, green Mario. Yep. Tall, taller, greener Mario. Even though like the other thing this game did, I know that I'm just keep, no, no, you're 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 jumping yeah. down. You're jumping down to le- to the legacy section, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> you know, order is an illusion. Yep. Um, you'll never know security. Nope. The uh, this was the game that made me get everyone's like Luigi uh, appreciation. Yeah, because like Luigi didn't really have a personality before this. Like this is what defined him as a scaredy cat. Yes, he has the one powerful, and even kind of after this, it's not mm-hmm. nearly as defined. Right. Like, when he shows up in other Mario games, a lot of times he's just there to say, like, yes, Mario. That is true, <laughs> Mario. Of course, Mario. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> don't put me back in the box, Mario. <laughs> Mario, you know, just parentheses, subtitles, Italian noises. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then it was just like, okay, that the the bigger one agrees with the smaller one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this is this is so full of of defined character for him in mm-hmm. a way that I, it just I was like, oh yeah, of course I like Luigi. Yeah, Luigi's great. And it wasn't until mm-hmm. I played mm, about half of Luigi's Mansion 3 that I realized kind of like why that works. There is so much care put into Lu- to Luigi's animations here. Oh, yeah. In this, like, y- you know, um, and, and it's it's, pre- it's present in this one. And I'm sure it's present in Dark Moon, which I got sitting in a shopping bag uh, <laughs> out out in my living room right now. Uh, but like mm-hmm. the fact that this is not like a, you know, hoo hoo ha doing backflips kind of thing. It is all just in the ways that he walks and does like little celebrations, the smallness, but also the uh, kind of care that is put into the animations. The smallest of, the, of these very careful animations really make him just likable in a huge way. Yeah, yeah. It's incredibly cute. It's incredibly well crafted. No. Um, it is a, a, a darling cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what Luigi's doing here, um, you know, just like in the classic Mario is missing, Luigi has to rescue Mario. Um, and he does that by exploring this haunted mansion uh, using this modified vacuum cleaner, the Poltergust 3000, uh, which has basically been modified into a proton pack to capture ghosts. Yes. Yeah, it is, it is a, a ghost sucker mm-hmm. of, of, of a sort. Um, <laughs> it is the primary, you know, verb of the game. Yes. Uh, Luigi does not jump. To suck and you blow. You walk around, <laughs> you suck and you blow. It, you can see that it blows as it sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And what you're doing is you're going around to ghost. You are uh, startling them. When their heart is exposed, you can hit them with a flashlight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can start drawing down its health by sucking it in. Mm-hmm. Um, this is kind of an element of, adds like an element of puzzle mm-hmm. um, to the game and reflex because you yeah. cannot have your flashlight and your vacuum out mm-hmm. at the same time. Even though, do you remember, like, do, does your vacuum have a headlight on it? Um, I have had vacuums with headlights on them in the past. How weird is that? <laughs> For like night vacuuming, like what the yeah. fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think they were invented in London during the Blitz, so people could clean without turning on their house lights and getting targeted. Okay, that that, that, no, that no, no, that, no, I, that no, that's no, not the case. It makes more sense than than I don't want to flip the light switch <laughs> and turn on the light while I vacuum. Like I don't want to wake up Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like, I don't really understand. Yeah. So fucking weird. Um, <laughs> but this this is not one of those vacuums. Right, this has right. no light on it. So you have to choose mm-hmm. to either have the light so it's, it's or like the Doom vacuum. 3. This was two years ahead of Doom 3. Yeah. yeah no, no duct tape mod. Right. For, uh, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you, you startle them, you expose the heart. Uh, there's often work that goes into this and that's going to honestly be the, the majority of the episode is just, is describing these vignettes. Um, but you only deal damage to these ghosts if you're moving Luigi in the opposite directions of kind of the ghosts flailing, struggling. Um, yes. And this kind of works a little bit like a fishing game, except instead of sitting in a boat, Luigi's being dragged all the way around these rooms uh, kind of into hazards and stuff. So you have to like make a, you know, sp- you know, split second decision whether you're going to avoid damage um, or, you know, continue trying to damage the other thing. It's like weirdly technical uh, is, is, is how it ends up being. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's technical. It's very light. Yeah. As well. Like it, it's, it's a light mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like it is uh, the consequences tend to be very low. Um, the ghost will drag you into hazards or create hazards, but in any given room, there's like two ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really easy game, and this this thing of just pushing in the opposite direction is very simple. Mm-hmm. Um, again, in a way that like I think is six hours. Yeah, you know, like it, it's a it it's interesting. Like and learning to you know, and my arc through this game was one of trying to become more efficient. Mm-hmm. Like, how many of these ghosts can I one cycle? Yeah. Uh, you know, and just never, uh, never have to restun. And that gives you bigger financial rewards. It plays into nothing, which we'll talk about, <laughs> um, you know, which is kind of a missed opportunity. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion of this, but it plays a little bit like a fish fishing game or a Ghostbuster game. Yeah. In general, like it is, it is uh, explicitly very Ghostbuster, like even though the developers say that it is not <laughs> inspired sorry. by that. 
who, is, who, yeah, who are these like, busters okay. of ghosts that you speak of? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ghostbusters. I do not know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a Ghostbusters game. Yeah, it's, so. <laughs> it's very much so. Uh, the other thing you're doing, in addition to going to these puzzle rooms, is uh, as you're walking through the hallways, you'll get random ghosts. Mm-hmm. They'll pop out. Um, sometimes that happens inside rooms, but they're kind of random encounters or ghosts you have to take out in a room to clear it or to make room for the, uh, I don't know, like mini boss. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost. Or like to, 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 to bring it out. Like each of these like little rooms is its own kind of mini boss encounter that sometimes yes. has like waves of enemies that you have to fight, um, in front of or during, uh, d- yes. you know, d- during kind of the main, uh, the main encounter. Uh, and also like you're going around in these really richly decorated rooms. There's lots of little interactable items. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they're just kind of about as set dressing. And so you're oftentimes like hunting for, you know, either money, uh, or where these ghosts may be a uh, hiding. Yeah. You go shake things. Yes. Um, you know. and, and, and if you're not next to something, when you press the shake button, Luigi shouts Mario, <laughs> um, in, in, in a really we, sad voice. Yeah. And it just, well, I, I love the, uh, I don't know how many Mario barks they put in, but it feels like it, like they have one for every, like, you know, half point notch on a confidence meter. So like from yeah. zero to 10 in half point increments, Mario, yeah. Mario, Mario, yeah. <laughs> he, he and you can just kind of sit there and jam the Mario button, mm-hmm. you know, like Princess Peach on a bad day. Ooh. Um, and I don't know what that means. The, <laughs> uh, so it's a uh, it's it's pretty fun. It's really cute. Mm-hmm. Um, your interaction with these objects, it's worth noting, like is very limited. Yeah, yeah. Um, I in my mind had this more of like a ghost house kind of thing. Ghost house or ghost master? What is it called? Ghostmaster, uh, Ghostmaster, called, like where you control a, a haunted house and you uh, are ghosts that manipulate certain objects. Oh, that's the steam. Can... Yeah, that's the steam one. That's uh, oh gosh, the steam version of haunting starring Polter guy. But basically, yeah, yeah. You know, in in my memory, because I, I, you know, we'll talk about our histories with this. That was more what happened, and really, it's it's kind of a one size fits all interaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you move things with a vacuum, or you shake them with your hands, and that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a puzzle game. Yeah. Um, puzzle, again, you know, being the theme lately, is kind of overstated. Like, sometimes it felt like a clever puzzle. Yeah. It is more like a task, but it's a really fun task. Yeah. That happens quickly mm-hmm. and has fun kinesthetics and then is over and you move on to the next one. Yeah. And there like, are, like, subtle variations to the order of operations that you have to do sometimes. And I think that the subtlety of that kind of makes it seem like there are fewer... They're, 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 you know, they're, they're, there's little, there's less variance than there actually is. Yeah, yeah. Like you end up, you end up throwing uh, balls of things at ghosts a lot mm-hmm. to uh, make them vulnerable. What you're describing in terms of kind of like a more richly interactable environment is absolutely present in Luigi's Mansion Three. I just want to, make, oh yeah, make sure I get out in front of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I've I've seen uh, I've watched some video of that mm-hmm. and stuff, and and I'm interested in other Luigi's Mansion games. I'm going to wait a little while because yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. end this being like yeah, more Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> I, I ended up being like, oh, I'll play another one of those Luigi's Mansion in like a year. I'm like throwing a fun grenade into the future. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but it, I, my point just being like contrasting this with Ocarina of Time, like yes. the last game we covered for the yeah. show, is that those tasks to me felt um, tedious because they were inter- they were on my way to the ultimate, like the goal of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking me to light all the torches in a room, uh, then I was like, oh man, I, I was told I have to go find this thing and I want to get the new item to play with. And I want to get into a cool fight in this game. You also have to light all the torches in a room at Mm -hmm. one point, but it takes way less time. Mm -hmm. And that's, then you're immediately shunted over to a new zone and set piece and charming little bit of dialogue or um cute little animation Mm -hmm. and then you're in another room with another puzzle like so like the the macro pacing of it is not great Mm -hmm. there's a lot of like weird backtracking you do yeah the micro pacing is excellent it iterates so Um, quickly yes yeah Uh, you know just the idea that like you're always going to be going to another room with another you know again not particularly challenging puzzle like but you're going to go to another room with another kind of thing to do and another and a fun engaging in your hands mm-hmm. combat challenge like fishing challenge <laughs> um and then as soon as it's done here's another one yep here you here's go. another one here's yeah. another one that's awesome mm-hmm. like for this is a 6 hour game that needs to be a 6 hour game as mm-hmm. opposed to something where it's like oh this would should have been 12 hours or this is 3 hours of content stretched out 6 hours yeah you know it's it's pretty well paced on that micro scale mm-hmm. i think yeah 
And I think that, you know, the, the a thing that works in this game's favor is, you know, it, the, these portrait ghosts, these, you mm-hmm. know, individual rooms. Most of the rooms have one of these, you know, these mini bosses that have those, you know, kind of themed, really well integrated, you know, a series of tasks that you need to do. And like, you know, there's like a little hint system built in. You can take a picture of the ghost and, it, you know, you see its internal dialogue with like a hint about like the order that you need to do things or like what you need to look for in the room to, uh, you know, to, to, to make it vulnerable. Um, so it's not just, you know, like it's not, not necessarily difficult, but like it's fun to play like, a, you know, like <laughs> a 20 second detective of looking around this room and kind of soaking in the character of this, you know, kind of dollhouse set that's here before you, yeah. before you find like the loose end that you need to pull to make this thing, you know, come together for you. It's, it's hugely charming. I mean, that's part of the, the kind of charm factor to me. Yeah. Cause like the, the, the idea of the actual task you have to complete to form the puzzle mm-hmm. um, is limited by your verb set. Like, yeah. Yeah. You Suck know, and blow. Your, your puzzle, like how many puzzles can there be when the only things that you can possibly do are shake, suck or blow? <laughs> <laughs> you know like Sorry. the the you know when when you're when you're a shake suck blower mm-hmm. everything looks like something that could be shaken blown or sucked yes you know and uh you can kind of basically do an an adventure game version of just rubbing up yeah on things yeah. um or waiting or something like that so it, it's it's doing this right after ocarina of time it was a weirdly like nefarious thing because mm-hmm. it forced me to uh, examine things in this game that I was enjoying mm-hmm. that on the surface are very similar to things in Ocarina of Time that I did not enjoy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that pace and charm and the quickness in which you do everything makes a really big difference. Yeah. And also, like, the difference is in Zelda, oftentimes the tasks, right? Tasks slash puzzles, those are obstacles put in the way of where you of what you ultimately want to do, which is get the item, get to the boss, etc. Um, here, it's its own reward. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, and six hours. Well, and six hours, of, of course. Six um, hours. The other things you can do other than just push, suck, or blow um, is there's this kind of element element system mm-hmm. uh, to it, which I honestly don't love, uh, if yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah, it's a little clunky. I don't like how you yeah. have to fill it up. You can only carry one at a particular time. Um, That's yeah. the real issue. Yeah. Like making it scarcity uh, thing just means backtracking. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I think I need ice here. What room has ice? Yes. Um, and you, you backtrack it, but you have fire, water, and frost. They act like paper, rock, scissors, mm-hmm. um, to each other. And they're used for some puzzles and for some fights. There are yeah. some ghosts that are only vulnerable, uh, instead of being made vulnerable by your flashlight are made mm-hmm. vulnerable by incinerating them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all of those elements. So specifically, um, you've got light, you have physics with, uh, you know, pulling on things like this has cloth physics, weirdly. Um, which was not necessarily seen an awful lot, uh, at the, at the time on systems. Uh, and then you have these, um, sprays that you do that have like particle kind of things. This is a game that actually kind of like needed the GameCube to happen. And this was a really good demonstration of what that additional hardware could do. Yes. Yeah. Um, and banking on that ended up being a pretty big miscalculation. Yes. On Nintendo's <laughs> part because gamers were less impressed with that than they were with just not being able to, or than they were put off by not having a traditional Mario game. Yeah, not having until a they got the abominable Mario Sunshine, <laughs> uh, which is a game I do not like. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, in addition to kind of regular enemies and portrait ghosts, which are kind of mini bosses, there are larger end stage bosses. Mm-hmm. Um, these have kind of more robust, like these play like traditional Mario boss battles. Yeah. Basically yeah, with, without jumping to me. Mm-hmm. Um, one concept, do it three times. Yes. Maybe uh, a little know, bit, maybe a little bit of escalation or change, but yeah, do it three times. Yeah. Generally, generally pretty simple, but all mm-hmm. pretty fun. Lots of character. Yeah. Um, those as well. Yeah. Uh, partway through the game, uh, the mansion is flooded with 50 booze. Um, you know, the, the, the main villain here is King Boo. He's got his little coterie of dipshits that all are all very cleverly named. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just, I like all the boo puns that they work in. Um, and this adds kind of a hot and cold game to the regular exploration and portrait ghost capture that you're doing where you need to find and capture these boos. Um, and yes. I don't necessarily care for this particularly because as the game goes on uh the booze that you find in the higher tier areas they have more health the booze can actually leave the room 
um and there's your vacuum doesn't have the same physics on booze yes um they they will continue they don't care about your vacuum your vacuum being on them hurts them but it Mm -hmm. doesn't suck them in right it doesn't it doesn't hold them down or pull them toward you and they can just they can just decide to peace out to another room where they're going to hide again Uh, additionally your detector also just finds round things so occasionally it's like a volleyball that has a boo face uh drawn on it which is very fun or it's a bomb i want that that i I want that volleyball volleyball really bad oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you you sometimes they'll trap you or trick you with yeah. balls or bombs. Mm-hmm. Um, if you chase the boo right away, it won't hide yet. Yeah, like if you yeah. just go through the wall where it's at. Mm-hmm. But this is tedious. Yes, um, and it's tied into the progress of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, they have persistent health, so after you chase them, it's not like you have to start over. Um, but it's just kind of frustrating to uh, you know. I was like, oh, this is an optional. Collect all the things. No. I get it. You know, I'm not going to do it. It's not optional. No. Um, you have to do 40 of the 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the game and there will be kind of progress gates for it and that means going back to rooms you've already cleared like in one way i like it because it's efficient yeah and the hide and seek part of the kind of hot and cold thing is a little bit fun mm-hmm. um but not 50 it's times not 40 times yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah not 50 times or 40 times um and it, we're exaggerating because we 15 of those boos you get from um from a bosses. boss fight yeah yeah but the uh you know not 25 times mm-hmm. right um, it's just kind of a little bit tedious and it does feel like a, a nod towards insecurity about length. Yeah. And like, it felt like they bit. thought, ah, there's, they're, they're like, if we don't have anything that's explicitly like stars, you know, to like, yeah. to, to gate this progress. So what, what can we put in kind of using things that we already have? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't love it. Uh, eventually I just started when, if a boo was in a room and it had a low amount of health, I would just mm-hmm. do it yeah to yeah. get it out of the, so i didn't have to backtrack later mm-hmm. but the first major boo gate i did have to backtrack for and was mildly frustrating if yeah, not vorpal yeah. but i'm not driven by collection yeah the the game, the, so, the, the, yeah. Se- the second this popped up i went and looked this okay how many of these are mandatory i saw 40 of them i yeah. was like well shit i just have to stay on pace so i'm never going to i'm never going to skip one yeah no one gets to live <laughs> don't let the sun sit on you know uh but just i as and that plays into the economy part too which we'll talk about yeah uh, yeah and, and do you have a note for that or should we jump into that now uh, I've, I've got it about the end but like we, we, we yeah we should we, we should bring it in now because this game is completely littered with cash and coins and uh diamonds and stuff and it really really signals but like hey you want to capture uh, you you want to suck all these things up and walk over them when you take damage you actually drop some so it like is sonic yes <laughs> weirdly yeah. like sonic um so it is signaled it is coded um in a in a play sense uh to seem extremely important to your progress however this does not actually drive an economy yeah, it's it's one of the weirder things about it because you could make the argument that it's basically like coins, right? right? But a real games criticism 101 thing that like, you know, when you first start thinking about games, one of the things you realize mm-hmm. is that in Mario games, coins are not used as points. No. Like they are used uh, sometimes that way. Like, yes, I can go into a bonus room where there's coins. There's but a lot of times new Super Mario, finding. new Super Mario Brothers 2, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to I was going to mention that, but like yeah. even just in general, like, right, mm-hmm. like Super Mario Brothers one, mm-hmm. the first pipe you can go down, it's just a platform with some coins on it. Mm-hmm. Just feels good. But in that game, uh, extra lives, right kind of thing. So getting 100 coins is desirable. And two, they oftentimes use coins as pathing. Yeah. So like, here's here's a path on this platform. That's a way to gently encourage the player to jump on this platform. Mm-hmm. And Mario games have been doing that forever. Yep. Uh, eventually in 3D Mario's, it started being like, here's a way to encourage you to look for secrets. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in Mario 64, you do this to get coins. Uh, but they've kind of like backed off that a little bit mm-hmm. until they started actually adding an economy to yeah. things. And you end up with Mario uh, Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey. Yeah. You know, where you have an economy, you can buy outfits and you can buy uh, stars and completion stars with the money. Mm-hmm. And then you end up the other side of that, you end up with New Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, which is a game I really love, mm-hmm. um, where it just says, you like coins, do you? <laughs> and, and that, to me, is like a reward for people who associate liking coins as something meaningful mm-hmm. and just want to have explosions of coins everywhere in a, like a synesthetic, yeah. you know, joygasm <laughs> of, of ultimate capitalism. 
you know, uh, <laughs> but but here the way they work is as a collect a collectathon element basically like yeah. you can go around just collecting all the coins if you want hmm. and then it changes what jpeg you get at the end of the game yep and i got uh i think it was like five million or 500 million or something it was it's a lot of money <laughs> there's the, the, so many a, commas in that value <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it was 500 million. And they gave me this pathetic little Animal Crossing shack. And I was like, what is the housing market like? Yeah. In in Luigi Town. Like, this I is thought crazy. Portland was bad. <laughs> exactly. Like, what is, what is it? It was just very like, oh, I, I thought I was doing pretty good because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, 500 million. I wasn't going out of my way to get money. But when you're looking for booze, you just get money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, this ends up making really weird speed runs of the game because, uh, there's a speedrun category that's like best mansion at the end. Mm-hmm. And when you fight a portrait ghost, the size of pearl that they drop depends on uh, how many cycles. And if you get hit, yeah, um, you do. So they, you optimize one cycling them, not just for speed, but for money. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to get the big pearl from everything. So it rewards you. But like, what does reward mean in this context? Right. I, I would have loved a store where I could be like, hey, um, here's consumables. You can just add fire element to your vacuum. Mm hmm. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, like, let's, let's give you, you know, let, let's increase the capacity on this. Let's increase the range of your, uh, let's increase like the, the amount of damage, uh, that your, that your vacuum yeah. does, et cetera. Like, I don't know, yeah. like if you code something as money, I expect to be able to buy stuff with it, yes. you know, especially yeah. in a game made in 2001. <laughs> Well, totally. And I also like it's a thing where it's like I hate collecting in games, but I love economies. Yes. You know, I I like the feeling of uh, doing something, making progress and then slowly like I don't want, you know, 0.3% shotgun damage versus vehicles. Mm -hmm. But I do want, uh, you know, there is room for meaningful upgrades in this game. Yeah. And it would have made me want to actually get all this cash. Yes. Um, so. So as it stands, it's just kind of a bunch of visual noise. Um, it's just mm-hmm. another, another thing for the game to spit out at you when you interact with something, um, in, you mm-hmm. know, in, in the background, one thing that does happen that is funny that I kind of appreciate is, so if you get basically no money, like you have to go out of your way to avoid pickups, Luigi ends up with a tent, uh, with a tent at the end, um, mm. instead of being able to, being able to afford a house and that is its own challenge run is to, yeah, yeah I like that too. Yeah. Avoid, I think, I think that is good in terms of incentivizing a different kind of play but it's not enough to justify this system that raises an expectation and then misuses that you know basically misuses its presence yeah it's basically it's basically like if you're going for the best house or the worst house it adds (laughs) meaningful play if you're going for anything in between like it Mm -hmm. does not you know right and it just uh i just i really I was surprised there was nothing to buy because this has this very like big emphasis on gadgets. You yeah. have a Q style mm-hmm. figure uh, in this who is like upgrading your machine and telling you about it and everything. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, no, I'm going to get things uh, now. Yeah. No, things are gotten. Yeah. Uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, not a huge deal, but kind of a bummer. And like generally, I just I don't like collecting in video games. Right. Um, a lot of the like facts about this are like, oh, find all the gold mice, find all the speedy ghost and stuff. And I'm like, no, no man, thank I, you. I, 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 I prefer I'm gonna not die to. Someday. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that. Oh. Have you seen how long Legend of Grimrock 2 is? <laughs> I'm fucking do that. <laughs> He'll play through the surge. It's fucking yeah. hard. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so this is a pretty linear game, honestly. Uh, Very you know, linear. yeah, it is, you know, your progress is extensively gated by keys. You know, even though you're going around in a mansion and it's laid out, you know, with hallways and stuff, when you clear a room, oftentimes the reward for doing so is a key. The game will show you where you need to use it. And then you just kind of have to go directly to where that is because yeah. it might be the only place that is available to go that will have new things for you. And the alternative would have been horrendous. Yes. Like if you just had to try the key on every door. No, not good. You know, that would not have been okay. What I wanted more of, there's one very specific optional key you can get that unlocks a shortcut. Jesus. I, I would have liked a lot more of that. Yeah. Oh, you, you I don't like I, that? I, I don't know what that noise meant. No, no. I just, I didn't get that key and I don't know. I didn't, uh, I didn't know where to get it. So every time I, every time I needed to go up to the third floor, I had to go out the back through the courtyard. That's us. Uh, to go all the way around. Yeah. I didn't get it right away, but I'll, when we get to that part in the game, I'll okay, cool. I'll spoil it for you. I'll give you a pro tip. <laughs> cool. Um, but that I wanted a lot more of that because that also encourages you to fuck around with stuff in the background. And during the game, I feel like I've been discouraged to do that because all I would get was piles of cash. Yes. 
and I don't know if everyone listening to this knows this, but money you gain in Luigi's Mansion does not transfer to real life currency. Yeah, I wasn't I able made to a cash cu- in my cart. I made a know? couple of, I made a few assumptions based on how much money I was getting here that are really going to be a problem for me. Yeah, like yeah. a couple, a couple big, uh, big upgrades. To your I house. have so many skidoos now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a buyer's market on skidoos. Um, I have nowhere to keep them. I installed a Waldo between the living room portion of my house and the bedroom portion of it. So I can pet pocket. <laughs> you know, he's you, in bed and I'm not. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say, you know, cats can't get the coronavirus. No, no, no. It's not for that. It's oh, so yeah. I don't have to look at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, like I just, I know cats can't get the coronavirus. Um, I thought that's the, where you're uh, going with it. I thought you were going for rough uh, chuckles. I didn't even try. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. Thing, I, I mercifully forgot about the virus for two fucking seconds. That off. happens. And yeah. And I brought it, <laughs> I brought it for skirming dragging, back. Yeah. I think you were dragging me back into the hot zone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a weird like element, uh, you know, so even though it's very linear, you do end up doing a lot of backtracking. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that shortcut that doesn't really matter. Right. Um, you know, you will still be doing quite a bit of backtracking. Mm-hmm. Um, and the game loves to, uh, kind of rank you between the money and between just kind of, uh, dep- the portrait ghosts that you capture get different frames. Yeah. In your gallery. Yeah. Like, Going from really bronze to, to gold. Yeah. Yeah. Like go back and just kind of look at your accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's something. Yeah. So the the frames are not new in uh in the 3ds remake, which both of us played. Um, mm-hmm. The um, but what is added is the ability to go to the gallery and redo those uh, encounters in order to get better frames. In the GameCube yes. version, when you beat a boss, it was beaten, um, yeah. and uh, you know, you couldn't you couldn't appeal for a better score by trying it again. In a, in a general sense, I recommend the 3DS version. The 3DS uh, second analog nub is not great. Yeah. It took me a long time to get used to that. I eventually did because it's an easy game. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other kind of ease of use things that are added um, mm-hmm. made this uh, worthwhile to me to play yeah. on that version. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's ranking you there. You get those, you collect that money. We talked about getting it. Mm-hmm. I really want to talk about the charm in this thing. Um, and I think sure. that the, 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 the charm here can be summed up by the fact that Luigi gets a game, gets a Game Boy Horror. It's yeah. A, it's a Game Which Boy. Is, it's, it's a Game a, Boy Color. It's a Game Boy Color. Uh, it's, it's the best kind of Game Boy Color, which is the one that I had, which is the, uh, the trans, the transparent purple Game Boy Color. Yeah. But it has a yeah. different, you know, screen lens on it that says Game Boy Horror, and it acts as your as your interface and as your camera, so your PDA, yeah, your camera, um, your map, mm-hmm. things like that. And it's just it's just cute, yes. like it's kind of an non sequitur mm-hmm. that they replace the word color with horror. It doesn't even you rhyme. Know, it's not like the Game Boy Black or anything. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> no rhyme. We're not operating on that. We're not we're not that level <laughs> right. with this. It's just cute. Yeah. Um, the charm uh, comes through huge, like charm and care in the music. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a, a very distinct theme for this game that Luigi whistles as you're walking around. There's not mm-hmm. uh, very much diegetic music, right? Or non-diegetic music. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luigi whistles it. Um, one of my favorite touches, and this is uh, so subtle, you mm-hmm. know, or not so subtle, but just it's a little thing, is that when you try a door that's locked, you get a, the squeaking makes a little tune. Mm-hmm. It's like this little three note, like, and it's in key with the theme song yep. and stuff. And it, I just, I love it. Yeah. That, that, that's uh, like a thing out of like slot machine design that like everything yeah. needs to be a melody. <laughs> like, yeah. Or, or like, look at like Axiom Verge where like the health beeping right, right. The beat or something like that. No. Like, it's just a really nice fucking touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which, well, you know, just and, really, really cute. And I love how they use the music and the fact that Luigi's whistling it um, to kind of show it a change in the Literally environment. in the dark. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but like, you know, before, you know, so before you clear a room or clear an area, it's all dark and spooky. And, you know, there could be ghosts literally jumping out from anywhere. And Luigi is nervously humming it and kind of doing this really like just you know petrified basically petrified shaggy from scooby-doo kind of walk yeah <laughs> and then when you when you clear a room it's all lit up and luigi walks around confidently and whistles so going from that nervous yeah. hum to that whistle is so huge he becomes king shit of fuck mountain <laughs> yep but, and then he opens another door you know, bmoc man like, just, like, <laughs> walking around cock of the walk <laughs> strutting his shit i'm the taller brother it's what time i asked like, you know <laughs> Like, yeah. And then he goes back into his pupae form yes. when he gets scared again. Yes, he he re- yeah. to, he re-timidifies. 
Um, yes. And just like generally, like just the cute spooky, uh, like the, the the intersection of cute and spooky is something I'm really going to enjoy. The fact that this mm-hmm. is kind of a takeoff on like Resident Evil, like down to keys, the keys, the, the keys yeah. that are uh, coded after, um, uh, oh gosh, playing card suites, the, the, the mm-hmm. door opening animation where you see him reaching down and opening it up. Like that is so intentional and that speaks to me on such a fundamental level that I just, yeah. I loved it every time. There's a real fourth grade kind of haunted house appeal to this. So, mm-hmm. like, if you've ever had, like, a fun fair or something like that, uh, that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, this isn't gory or anything well, like I that. Mean, <laughs> you get all the coins, Cole. Okay. Luigi yeah. peels his face off like wax. Yep. Uh, it's, it's pretty, I read a creepypasta he, about he, it. He builds, a, he builds a mansion out of the bones of his enemies. He starts making out with dead Bart. <laughs> and it's a cuter class uh, like yeah. creepy pasta. you can't look directly at it <laughs> no it's just like uh um yeah lord save me from the horny creepy pastas um oh man um a, 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 an additional part of this here you know the fact that mm-hmm. this was you know for you know, three three D Mario adjacent game on a uh, uh, on a new console like it was it was a launch console kind of thing the fact that they decided to go with this kind of dollhouse look where you're looking into yeah. like a cutaway like on on the side of this and it's not a full three yes. D camera is such a huge deal it's a real Wes Anderson move yeah, yeah. like this is a Wes Anderson DVD color cover <laughs> uh, kind of thing um, it's really cute it gives all this detail like one of the things that i really love about uh, games where you explore a mansion mm-hmm. um, i love a mansion in a video game yeah. is just all these themed rooms full of detail yeah you know uh it's a big big reason thing i love about resident evils it's a big yeah. thing i love about this yeah. um i love uh professor e gad the, so uh, the q <laughs> kind of figure very mm-hmm. cute uh some of my favorite gibberish speak mm-hmm. yabu yabu <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yabu, yabu, daki, daki. Luigi. <laughs> you know it's it's like it's just very like it's very adorable mm-hmm. um he is an old man and he uh he's in this mansion and he's giving you a vacuum mm-hmm. and uh it's it's just good i want more of him why does he not show up in mario kart like yeah i why mean is this game disrespected it seems intentional at this point that is that he hasn't shown up in mario kart so egad shows up in some of the mario and luigi games as well and it's implied that he is the inventor of the flood um <sighs> the, flood. <laughs> the flood yeah, yeah. uh but i i agree he he needs to be in in more places also his design is super good like his liver spots and his opaque glasses mm-hmm. the fact that he's coded yeah. as this you know again as like a you know as a doc as a doc brown kind of figure uh yes. it's really good yeah, the plumber's best friend is a disgraced nuclear physicist. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, something else that is great about uh, about Egad is that his name is different in different regions, and it's always a pun. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you know, so like you know, here Egad, like Egads, Egads, right? Uh, in Japan, it's Oyama, which means oh my. Um, mm-hmm. In French, it's Carl Tastroff or catastrophe. <laughs> like yeah and each of those he he is always like this pun of you know uh, of an ex- exclamation or just a name for a bad thing happening it's so good yeah it's really cute yeah even though i do take back that i want him in more things now that i found out he invented the flood mm, he needs to be punished yeah. but he did he, 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 I mean, he's, he, been, he's, <laughs> he's been in timeout for 20 years and maybe <laughs> we can release him from the vault i mean he like the yeah. he, he featured majorly in a luigi's mansion 3 it came out last year like literally like four months ago <laughs> he got, got early release for good behavior <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there are people out there listening to this who like love mario sunshine yeah. i tried to replay that once emulation yep came about uh and i just i don't like it it's just not good i don't like delfino island i don't like those little shits mm-hmm. you know i don't like it yeah no i I'm, you're not gonna get an argument for me no yeah uh, not not my favorite um so this was first shown as a tech demo for the gamecube in 2000 uh before nintendo uh considered making it a full game and it went through several iterations mm-hmm. um before we landed on the vacuum puzzle game we got with lots of lots of changes lots of cutting room floor stuff yeah uh, yeah so there were like rpg elements the rooms were supposed to change more um mm-hmm. it was originally going to be um you know like darker uh more difficult like like they didn't add the vacuum until relatively late in the game mm-hmm yeah. yeah, you had to suck them off with your mouth <laughs> uh, early on. <laughs> yeah. It's also, there was even more Resident Evil DNA, like early mm-hmm. on, um, when you were at half health, you crawled. Yeah. 
So similar to you know, Resident Evil, when you're hurt, you you move slower, mm. uh, things like that. Um, and they also originally wanted to make this uh, two things. Uh, one, two-player, mm -hmm. which you can uh, do in the 3DS version, and you can unlock with a uh, Game Shark hmm. uh, of this, which is really interesting. It doesn't totally work. Uh, the second player cannot go into any rooms that the first player has not gone into. Okay. But it does just spawn another Luigi that controls, then you can you can tag team this uh, on the GameCube. Huh. Um, their thing is that it originally was supposed to be in stereoscopic 3D. This is so um, weird. I had no idea that this was the case. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense with the little dollhouse mm -hmm. uh, kind of presentation, though. Yeah. Um, but it was too expensive. Right. At the so time, like, the kind like of, too expensive yeah. for the end user. Like Nintendo said, oh, yeah, let's do stereoscopic. stereoscopic. Let's do stereoscopic 3D. Um, <laughs> and they're like, no, like those those TVs don't actually exist in a way that consumers we, can get them now. The thing I remember seeing in the, the Awada Ask thing was it was also expensive to produce because they had a, a prototype of like a little device oh, that yeah. you would put, you know, on, on your thing. And that was mm -hmm. also expensive on their end as well. So basically, yeah. you, too much money all around. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I played this on the 3DS. I popped on the, the 3D for a little bit and it's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, 3D is a, is a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. Throw it away. Yeah. Um, so this is a, uh, a cult hit among Nintendo fans now, but when it came out, it's kind of hard to understate how this was written as, like, the end of Nintendo. Yes. Like, you know? the, the the fact that it was this, and then people said, okay, Mario Sunshine, whatever, and then when Nintendo did, when they revealed Toon Link, like, it's yeah. really, really hard to encapsulate all of the catastrophizing that was going on about the decisions that Nintendo was making specifically because it was perceived that they were not growing up with their audience. Yes. All these things are considered very kid-like. Right. You know, together. And they kind of are. Some of mm -hmm. those things are actually good with mm -hmm. that, you know, but they are, this was Nintendo being, being kind of safe. Yeah. You yeah. know, in terms of aesthetics and pretty unsafe as far as mechanics, like kind of exploratory, um, and doing something that uh, would, I feel like now would be what better all received in like a B game. Yeah. Yeah. There's an expectation for a, a Mario game to have a huge amount of content. And, mm -hmm. and this takes the Resident Evil model of like, there's a huge amount of content if you play it over and over for better scores. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not as expansive as Mario 64. Yeah. Or anything um, like that. I think that this was the first, the, it was the first, um, the GameCube was the first Nintendo console outside of like the virtual boy that didn't have a, did, that didn't have a Mario game at launch. This is also yeah. perceived as a slight because Mario had shown off, not Mario, Nintendo had shown off two things, both Mario 128 and uh, Mar Mario Net or Marionette uh, in the run up to the release of the GameCube um, that people expected to turn into something. Uh, mm -hmm. But it just wasn't there for the launch. Um, and yeah, so like that. Demos. Yes. Yeah. You know, Mario 128 turned into Pikmin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they, they still use the things, but mm -hmm. it's a real weird generation for Nintendo. Yeah. The, uh, the the GameCube. Mm -hmm. um, it sold fairly well. It's the fifth best-selling GameCube game, but we can all, you know, if we were alive during that time, we remember Capcom coming through and kind of saving yes. the GameCube with RE4 mm -hmm. being exclusive for a long time, etc. Um, this still sold really well, but the GameCube also does not feel like it has a huge library. Right. Like the fifth best-selling game for GameCube being a, a first-party <laughs> Nintendo game with Mario in it is kind of damning. <laughs> right. You know? It's like, what was the fifth best-selling game going to be, like, Bite and Kados? I you mean, know, I don't know. Yeah. That would make more sense. <laughs> so, Eternal Darkness or something. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd be curious about that, uh, what, the, what that yeah. list is. But um, uh, we alluded to this. It was remade for the 3DS in uh, 2018. Uh, they updated its visuals. Um, the controls uh, had to change because it can't be assumed that everybody has... Uh, you know, uh, either the 3DS Pro with the weird little analog nipple on the right or a controller. Well, what's that? Like control stick pro attachment? Yeah. 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 I have an XL, so I have the nub. Yes, I also have the nub and it is useless, useless. But they, yeah, they add the in. Nub is bad. Yeah, they, they add in like a way to like change your mode for like if Luigi is going to face a face in one direction and kind of strafe or if he's going to turn in which direction you go. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. Um Yeah. But overall, I think that this is a good way to play it, especially because, I don't know, like, Nintendo stopped selling Wiis that were backward compatible. Um, you know, emulation's yeah. kind of a pain in the ass, et cetera, down the line. Yeah, I, I don't really like GameCube emulation very much. Yeah. Um, it, is, it doesn't feel reliable own. enough to do, to do stuff for the show on it. 
yeah i don't i don't blame anybody for doing that instead but i think this is a pretty fun way to play the game yeah um there's a sequel as we Mm -hmm. mentioned there's two sequels uh in 2013 they made luigi's mansion dark moon Mm -hmm. on the 3ds and then luigi's mansion 3 came out this year yeah uh, 2019 on the switch um i've not played either i'm interested in both um I was under the impression that people liked Luigi's Mansion 3 and did not like 2 as much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, then other people have said that, like, no, it actually kind of depends on who you talk to. Yeah. Um, in looking at them, 3 looks really cool and 2 does not uh, to me. To 2, 2 breaks up into, like, smaller areas, like, smaller disparate areas that are, like, more um, widely themed. And also there are fewer, like, you know, basically the equivalent of the, of the portrait ghosts here. Mm. Um, you know, like, fewer, like, puzzle encounters. And that seems like a bummer to me. Yes. Whereas three takes place in a hotel mm-hmm. with like weird themed restaurants and like theme parks and stuff. And that sounds yeah. pretty fun to me. Mm-hmm. Um, not a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, know. I, Mario and Luigi aren't okay. brothers. They found that out in, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't movie. think, I can't think of a funny, of a funnier way to do it. Oh yeah. They're like adopted brothers, aren't they? In 23 and me. <laughs> they, 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 uh, yeah, they, they found out through uh, Luigi spitting on a, a <laughs> test tube and sending it back in a virus sleeve to the uh, 23 and me people. So. <laughs> the, the, the hesitation there in my head, I thought, yeah, they found it out when Luigi spat on a servant. <laughs> yeah. Spat on a waiter. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> just, I just yeah. I just like prima donna Luigi. <laughs> oh yeah, like he he's no longer scared. And it's the worst thing that happened to him. It's like mm-hmm. Travis in Fallout Four. He had yeah, like he's <laughs> lost all his charm. <laughs> he had that year of Luigi. Yeah, oh. and now now he's all like eyeballing people on the go kart track. Mm-hmm. You know? That 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 is still really funny to me. Yeah, yeah, it's a great great uh, animation. Yeah, great drawing. Um, yeah, so we're we're gonna get into it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm very happy to have gotten a first party Nintendo game that I love with my whole heart, basically, even yeah. though there are some flaws. But like, man, it's, it's it was exciting to play this and I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to talking about it. Yeah. Which I'll do right now. Right now, uh, so the game is kind of broken up into four different areas. Um, mm-hmm. Although it's just kind of like just boss, you know, bunch of room and then bosses. It's not like you're going to like different floors of the house or what have you. Like vaguely, you are kind like of. A it's bit. Like, like different first, sections. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just a little bit. You are, but mm-hmm. there's some definitely some kind of uh, crossover. Yeah, between those things. Mm-hmm. But we have yeah. Luigi. Uh, Luigi is under the assumption, based on a flyer that he got, that he won uh, a contest. He won this house, and he does not remember mm-hmm. mailing away to enter the raffle. Yeah, so <laughs> go for it. Yep. You know, don't don't look at gift gift house in the mouth. You know, <laughs> um, in the hell mouth. Uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah. So he uh, he's an idiot. You know, he's like, I won this contest. Uh, he goes inside this clearly haunted mansion. <laughs> And uh, all the doors are locked. You can't get around. You get to hear that little door lock theme. Mm-hmm. And an orange ghost uh, drops a key and flies away. Yeah. So you can then use this key to check upstairs. And you find uh, Professor E. Gad uh, trying to vacuum up a ghost. Mm-hmm. But he can't uh, he do, it. do it. He does, he does not have the physical vigor required to, uh, yeah. to, 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 to suck that ghost with all his might. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, because he fails, we are chased out and he explains like, hey, uh, so the mansion here isn't just haunted. It was actually like built by these ghosts in order to trap you and your brother. Mario came here. I think he got the same flyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 I'll ask for a boat. yellow boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, Mar- Mario's uh, parents were cousins. And, and thus, like Mario and Luigi both have this idiot disease where they think. <laughs> free houses just happen yes yeah yeah uh so he says hey you know we're we're, we're, we are at uh we we have a shared goal we want uh those ghosts away because egad uh is practicing some dark science basically these ghosts are his art collection (laughs) yes 
Uh, and it's like, you know, usually at this kind of thing, I'd want it to be more scary, but EGAD mm-hmm. up until I found out he invented the flood, um, was a good and pure boy and I allow him to do science crimes. Yes. Like EGAD Warren Ellis villain is okay with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in when I would play the game. <laughs> Uh, but, but like he like he he invented this machine that presses the spirits of humans onto mm-hmm. canvas uh mm-hmm. and king boo has come along um and uh freed all of them so yeah yeah uh king boo fucked it up yeah. uh, we love king boo mm-hmm. here this network. is uh king boo's uh first appearance mm-hmm. he's a good he's a good uh he's a good good boo he's a good buoy um, he's a good boy um you uh he connects you to the, to the uh, gallery you know where he mm-hmm. talks about this um because he, he caught a uh bulosis <laughs> and uh king boo freed all of his painting ghosts at this point mm-hmm. yeah give you kind of your your task here right. um, he gives you your game boy horror which acts as your pda in your menu and you return to the uh the mansion mm-hmm. um this is uh you know th- is this the first game where toads are just safe spots i think maybe uh... i've definitely seen that before uh sentence yeah, we we have. I, I I almost hesitate because I forget what the um I forget what the save spots were in like Paper Mario. Oh yeah, yeah I don't yeah. recall that. Yeah. No. Um, but a toad is here, a yes. mushroom retainer, <laughs> and uh, he's freaked out because Mario has disappeared, and he's a save point. Um, the game save at least on the 3ds version saves every single time you catch a boo, mm-hmm. which meant that I never use these toads. <laughs> Yeah, except so. for one time when it bit me and I had to do like three rooms over again after ah. I died to a boss fight. Yeah. I, I don't don't think I died in this game. Oh, cool. No, not hey, a fear, no. Not a brag. No, okay. I mean, no, it's, it's all right. Yeah. Well, it's well, just I'll, a th- thumbs of fury, man. I'll just, I'll just be over here being the worst. Yeah, just go in the corner and lick the cat's butt. <laughs> Wayne's World 2. Ooh. Um, yeah, so the uh, Toad is your save point. It's fun to find them because they're cute. Yeah. At yeah. one point, one of them flushes a key down a toilet like a fucking moron. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> like, if you flushed a toilet, the has brain disease. If, if, you, if you flushed a toothbrush down the toilet, you'd be a co host on yeah. the network. Yeah, well, we, that, 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 that's smart. You know, Drake meme, like flushing a key down the toilet. Mm-mm. Flushing a toothbrush down the toilet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, keys, are, like. keys, keys go on top of aisle markers at Target. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, Will loves telling those stories. Yeah. They're good stories. <laughs> like every DuckFest. Can't wait for DuckFest. Uh, or uh, DuckStream 20, uh, 2020. <laughs> uh, where the story is told again. Yep. Um, anyway. Yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm. <laughs> Will, if you're listening to this, I'm teasing you because I love you. Yeah, and also uh, I, I I figured out why. I mean, why should you guys have the corner on emotional violence? No, no, it's okay. I like uh, dark coal. Yeah, bringing out dark coal, <laughs> coal, coal boy horror. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you got these toads uh, scattered it's around. Way different than coal boy horror, <laughs> which like makes that way worse. Yeah, you say <laughs> boy horror. Yeah, okay. well, I, mean, I, was try- I was just trying to say. I mean, there's they're they're homonyms. Yeah, you know, and, and Cole, largely boy horror, boy horror, horror. coal horror, yeah, boy horror, horror. Yeah, mm. it, it's tricky. Yeah. There, there's, it's hard to turn you into this uh, device from this game and yeah. not make it sound dirty. A little bit. I think we should stop trying. Um, oh, here's another generality thing. Uh, I wish there was better fast travel in this. There are mirrors oh. that you oh, can yeah. warp through, but it only warps. It's like a one way. It takes you back to the yep. square. Yep. And the first time I did that, I was so pissed. Yep. Because I just saw, it was the first time I saw the mirror and I was like, oh, I'm trying to figure out a puzzle. Uh-huh. In this room. Maybe I take a picture of oh. that. Yeah. Nope. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm all the way across the um, house now. Fuck. Yeah. More, more shortcuts and more, more fast travel would have been great. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so we talked to Toad. Um, we go into this parlor uh, room here. So we're going to kind of list the rooms and the things we do in them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so in this one, you have to blow out these purple candles with the, uh, the vacuum mm-hmm. and the portraits portraits kind of laugh at you and then these three ghosts orange ghosts come in and you vacuum them up yeah. um at least on the 3ds version i've done a little training thing mm-hmm. about the basic mechanics so this is no problem i had not done the training thing uh for me it was like okay like what do i need to do to get this thing to go out? it didn't even occur to me that i could put out the candles in this gamecube game mm. yeah but it was i mean it's not a no that, that was less a problem about fighting them and it was more just me you know not understanding where the bounds were in the puzzles here yeah 
Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, there are different kinds of ghosts. Like there are taller ones that have more health. There are ones that grab you. I think it's, it's only worth mentioning them if they, if they, if they factor into a particular room or encounter, uh, such as in the wardrobe room where they start throwing in the slimers. Gary, these are slimers, yes. right? The slimers who love bananas yes. instead of hot dogs. <laughs> um, I love the I love the uh, banana peels acting like the same way they do in Mario Kart. It's so good. Like, it's, re- it's really charming. Yeah, these you... guys have a million health. Like these guys are annoying as hell. Yeah, and when they um, when they do mix up, especially in boss fights. So when you slip on a banana peel, it'll break your stream, uh, and mm-hmm. so you'll have to like do the capture, start the capture process over again. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you you fight banana ghosts. <laughs> This is your key to go to the uh, foyer, and the professor says, like, listen, you're going to find a a portrait ghost soon. Mm -hmm. Use the camera to find out how to expose their heart. So this is kind of telling you the hint system. Yeah. Um, And when you go in, there's a man on a rocking chair reading. Um, He's sleeping, and he does not materialize if you're facing him. So you have to put your back to him, so he materializes and wait for him to get tired, which lets down his guard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I love that. I love working in, do nothing and wait into uh, into a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once he's sleepy, you pull him in pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is your first one, though. Yeah. Um, uh, the second one is in the master bedroom here. Yeah. Uh, this this is, one is more yeah. physics based. I think this is like a like this is the one that I would describe to be so like oh yeah like this is the, the this is the kind of puzzle you're going to be doing in this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, even though like I do think it is limited by your verb set and the yeah. verbability of stuff around you. So like you know. In this one, there's a woman brushing her hair in a vanity mirror, um, and the way you expose her is by pulling the curtain aside with a vacuum, which mm-hmm. exposes a broken window, which makes a draft. Yes. Um, so this is, you know, that's cool, but it's not like you're you're not here in an escape room doing real stuff. <laughs> right. Like, you turn on the vacuum, you see what it affects, it affects the curtain, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. You know, you, you've done your verb, and that exposed the yeah. the subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah you you have learned okay cloth acts like cloth in this which you know i don't know i've described when i played that when i split when i played splinter cell on an xbox and i walked through those plastic flaps for 20 minutes because mm-hmm. it was like yeah, i'd never seen anything like that in a video game <laughs> i could see mm-hmm. this being mm-hmm. like that at the time you know yeah just being a fucking rube running away from the uh the, the train that is barreling at me yep yep from from the from the yep. movie from the movie screen um yes. yeah my favorite movie <laughs> uh the so. boss of this area is a ghost baby <laughs> do yeah. not do not think about the implications of ghost baby it's when a baby dies <laughs> cool um the uh, it happens yep yeah every all the day. time and sometimes they turn into ghosts mm-hmm. and sometimes they're playful fun ghosts yep like uh chauncey here yeah so uh, all these all these ghosts have names but it doesn't tell you their name until you until you suck them up so i didn't have them in the notes but this one is chauncey yeah this is chauncey um so you're in a little children's room um this is kind of a multi-step thing yeah. uh he's sleeping into a crib until you fuck with his rocking horse enough to make noise mm-hmm. um then he chases you around the only other object in the room is a rubber ball which you bop him with <laughs> um, he says you've given him an ouchie, and then he shrinks you down to fight you in his, like, hell crib. <laughs> in his hell world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which um, seems, uh, like, outsized retribution to me. Well, that's babies. That's babies. For you. Scream that's over babies. anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in this, this is a, a boss fight, like a very traditional Mario style boss fight. Mm-hmm. Um, he's invincible often, you know, mm-hmm. he shoots rocking horses at you. He bounces around on his belly and you have to wait for him to shoot, uh, these rubber balls out. So you can grab one of them with your vacuum. Um, I don't remember the tutorial telling me that I could blow with the vacuum. Yeah. With the other trigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that took me a second to, to figure out, um, which is kind of a little bit of a tutorial fail, mm-hmm. but that will shoot anything you have on the edge of your vacuum. Um, at the guy you do that and that exposes him and then you can uh suck him up mm-hmm. um it is impossible to one uh one phase him oh yeah um you know one cycle him yeah he will uh he breaks out of it like halfway through yeah, yeah. no matter what that so. makes sense yeah yep but it's a good fight you know as mm-hmm. far as mario fights uh, mario fights go um yeah. and so with him uh in there the professor calls and says hey uh bag's full why don't you come and I will demonstrate my horror machine that again takes the spirits of the deceased and captures them forever for my for my aesthetic amusement. Yeah, it seems pretty dark. Yeah, there's but no purpose the to this. Room. No, no, no. It's yeah, it's just for cruelty. Yeah. 
Uh, the cruelty is the point, yeah. Professor Egan. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, so you and you watch this little assembly line. You do it every time, and Mario's just like, woo hoo, <laughs> you know, <just laughs> making making fun noises about, uh, yeah. oh yeah, um, just very excited about these souls uh, being in purgatory. Mm-hmm. Um, and this allows you to get a uh, a key after you've done this. You got a key for the last little bit, mm-hmm. and you get to go through the heart door into the foyer. Um, th- that first area is kind of the tutorial. The first yeah. boss. Now we are in the body of the game, and it's quite a bit uh, more involved. Yes, yeah, we're going to start getting the element coins and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. like right away, we go into the bathroom here, uh, and this is where they introduce the uh, the ghost that will grab you uh, and hold on to you mm-hmm. and do damage and cause you to drop coins continuously. Uh, I don't like these things very much. I don't... Yeah, a little obnoxious. Yeah, but it's okay. Uh, the way you get health back in this game is by uh, succeeding at random encounters, generally. Yeah. Um, there will be hearts in addition to coins and the objects you you shake. Mm-hmm. But usually when I health will go down, I would just actually engage with some random encounters. Yeah. Uh, the random encounters tend to be kind of gotcha moments. Um, a ghost drops down from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, it scares Luigi for a second. And then you have a brief amount of time to turn around, shine the flashlight, and suck the, the ghost up. He only has one hit point. Yeah. Um, the other thing when you're in hallways is that there are mice and bats. Mm-hmm. Um, that will uh, show up, and you don't get anything for sucking them up unless they are gold mice, yeah. um, but you do it so they don't hurt you. Yes. Uh, then so. there are the spiky explosion ones that you have to avoid. You cannot suck them up. Yes, but if you hit them with fire, they'll explode in advance. Yes, if you happen to be carrying fire. Yeah, which you will roughly a third of the time. <laughs> um, so you make your way out to the bathroom to the ballroom. Um, the, he's, these are the Shy Guy ghosts. Yeah, I love these things. Um, they have the little spears uh, from Shy Guy Cannon. <laughs> Um, from Yoshi's Island. Yeah. And you have to suck their mask off, then switch to the flashlight, then switch back to the, the vacuum. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a little reflex challenge to do that. Yeah. Um, once you do this, um, they, uh, after you do this enough, two ghosts start showing up uh, who are dancing. Um, I did not know what made these guys exposed. I couldn't it figure it happened. out. Yeah, it happened. I, I, I'm tempted to look at a walkthrough and actually see what it is because, like, I figured that the, the rotating floor played a role in it but it, like it didn't i couldn't discern a pattern is the thing yeah yeah it's weird like there is a rotating floor on this it seems like a really bad way to dance <laughs> like, it seems like a way to fall down yeah it's it's i mean it also seems like a real lazy way to dance look at look at me i'm moving in a perfect circle because you're standing on a mm-hmm. m- like you're standing on a mechanism mr jackson yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um I, I'm I'm looking it up here. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, Ball, the, uh... Ballroom. What you do? Uh, these ghosts like to grab Luigi. No, that's the bathroom call. Ballroom. Here we go. They spell and pronounce the name differently. <laughs> the checkered floor will begin to spin. Step on the spinning floor, and the ghost couple, the floating Berlindas. That's actually really good. The floating Berlindas mm-hmm. uh, will yeah. appear, will appear dancing in the amphitheater. Turn your back on them and wait for the man to show his heart. Then spin around and start sucking. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, Gian, sucking. how are you doing? Yeah, wait for the man to show his heart, then spin around and start yeah. sucking. So, so I, so okay, I guess that's <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, the uh, so I think the challenge is staying faced away from them while the floor rotates like that. Yeah, yeah. Where you can also step off the rotating floor. Though. Also, yes. Like, <laughs> there are a lot of repeating concepts yes. uh, for these things, which is kind of a bummer. Mm. Um, but it, it happens real quick again. Like, it is, it happens almost too fast to get bummed out. Yeah. yeah. Um, after you take that out, you can go into the storage room. Um, mm-hmm. There are some grabby ghosts. Uh, then there is a secret passage. Yes. Um, which you press this uh, this button that is only visible in a mirror. Right. Um, this thing I wanted to have happen more often. Yep. I, I like that. Really cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's so clever. It's using the just the the camera conceit. You know where the mm-hmm. the the thing you need to inter- interact with is on the wall cutaway. Uh, yeah. You yeah. can't see it, but it is there. Mm-hmm. Very neat. Yeah. Um, once you do that, uh, you expose this button by sucking a poster uh, from the wall, and this button releases all the booze and king booze. Uh, you find out they took Mario and they flee when they see your vacuum. Yeah. I like this in retrospect because like, you know, just you're being a video game protagonist opening doors that are marked danger. Yeah. <laughs> like obviously yeah. they have gone to lengths to keep this, uh, to keep this locked up. I'm like, no, I'll just open it. Ah, uh, great problems. You, you Walter pack it. Yes. You, you EPA this, uh, <laughs> this thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but the, you know, the, the Egad he calls and says, Hey, to rescue Mario, we're going to need, we're going to need to weaken the boot collective by hunting them down. And he activates the radar and the Game Boy Horror. Because the idea is that yeah. the more booze that there are in one place, the more powerful that they get. 
Yeah, Luigi comes out strongly anti-union at this point. <laughs> Luigi's a Pinkerton. Um, the, bo- the, the, the Boonian uh, has to go. <laughs> You're a Boonian breaker. Co- collect a Boogany. <laughs> Yeah, you have to you have to stop that from from happening. Yeah. Uh, Luigi owns the the means of prosuction. <laughs> um, the uh, so you go back and you have to just get a certain number of booze. Uh, again, we talked about these as kind of bummers. Yeah. Um, you know, you do this for a little while until this opens up an event in the bathroom. This is the toad that has. He's like. Luigi, I think I flushed something important down the toilet. Do you want to go check it out? <laughs> and this felt like like Luigi raises them as their little kids. Yeah. You know, and you're just going to open it and see a kid's turd and you have to explain to the kid, like, that's not actually important. It's okay to let it go. Yeah. You know? It seems like a key. part of you, but. Yeah, it's not, you know? Yeah. And, and w- yes, now that I'm 39, I have been questioning, like, whether poop is part of you when it's inside your body or whether blood is part of you and stuff. Like, <laughs> have you ever, have you ever you thought about have you ever thought about like you're not going to get in heaven unless you're buried with all of the toenail and fingernail clippings that have been I, cut off? I had a thought uh, recently um, about them uh, like taking the thing where they're like, okay, we're not going to halt evictions, but we are going to halt the clause that you have to take all of your farts with you when you go. <laughs> And then having to like gather all the farts that I've done in this apartment, oh, Jesus, and like take a, them all with me in like, 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 like a like, Santa sack over my shoulder. This this has been a real this has been a real hell of an episode for like fart and fart and sucking jokes. But oh, like yeah. a lot of those farts are they are they're in your furniture anyway. Like they're in your chair. Although oh, you yeah. threw your old chair out. Yeah, yeah. No, there are yeah. there, there are definitely some some plein air farts uh, that have yeah, happened. Some, some freestanding <laughs> radicals, you know. <laughs> So or, or like poop like when you leave you have to take all of the like you just have to take the septic tank with you right you know right. like the old lady in labyrinth um no. um so I, I have thought about that but not with fingernail clippings no no I, um, are those part of you yeah 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 uh anyway um, toad says hey get this key out my toilet um yeah this opens up the breaker room but i can't i couldn't do anything down here yet not yet. It's it's real. It's kind of bad signaling. Like, yeah, it, it's a weird thing. This made me think about how like it is okay for a game to be linear. Mm-hmm. Like the best thing is for a game to be nonlinear. Mm-hmm. And second best is linear. And then third best is linear with one exception. <laughs> like that. That's a real bummer. There, there, there's like, a there's a pretty wide gap between two and three there. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. 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 But it just it was very confusing to me because. This gets introduced at the same time you have to um, get a certain number of booze. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, you know, Egad said you can weaken the collective, but I just thought that it was another collectible thing. I didn't realize right, it was like right. actually a boo gate. Mm-hmm. So I was stuck here for a little bit, like not for a very long time, but, you know, for 10 minutes or whatever, yeah. just not knowing what to do because you can go down to the break room and there's nothing to do there. Yeah. Also, it's frustrating because there is an event later on, we're going to get to get to it in probably about a half hour or so, where the power yeah. goes out and you have to go to the breaker room. However, I went down there. This key didn't work anymore. That door was locked again and I had to go it's real weird. beat a portrait yeah. ghost in order to get it. I have no idea why they unlock it there. Right. It's very bizarre. Um, you go bizarre. up to the breaker box and you just kind of like shake it like you're trying to get coins out of it and I was yes. like, luigi not now <laughs> you know <laughs> press the button yep. um i do like that this is luigi doing some plumbing though yep like a toad <laughs> flushing a key down the toilet is the kind of thing these people should be doing as their jobs yeah you know? a, a plumber simulator starring mario and luigi i don't like it now that mario is an adventurer yes i only like mario as a plumber you do a couple of mario. you do a couple of plumbing related things in this and it is a treat absolutely a plumbing treat <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. Instead, uh, you go to the mirror room, mm-hmm. um, and the mirror room uh, ghosts come out to attack, but they're only visible in the mirror. This mm-hmm. is real clever. Yes, um, I like this. Yeah. Also, I mean, would have been really impressive in two thousand one. Just gonna say, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and when you clear it, you're introduced to the element system here. Yeah. You get the fire coin. I'm not necessarily. I'm not sure what a coin has to do with your vacuum. Uh, but this mm-hmm. lets you suck up these fire elementals to spray fire and to shoot fireballs, you know, all of it using this particular meter. Um, any of these elements, they are going to be like floating as sprites around a fixture within particular rooms. So like there are like torches or braziers uh, that you'll find mm-hmm. here or like stoves uh, that'll have these moats floating around them. You now have the most dangerous vacuum on Earth. Yes. Uh, because sometimes it sets things on fire instead of vacuuming. Mm-hmm. The, mo- the, the most dangerous vacuum besides vacuum decay. Do not look up vacuum decay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't. I don't know what that is. It's, but I won't. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the uh, now that you have access to fire, uh, you can do things. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a floating ca- uh, candelabra that started floating around. 
Um, oh, before that, you go to the laundry room and you get Mario's hat. There's a little another gating thing where you have to get five pieces of Mario's like personal effects. Yeah, there's a very cooperative ghost fortune teller that like yes. uses these to read to give you like hints about where Mario is at and how to get to him. Yeah, it's all part of the critical path, though. It's not like, right, oh, right. you know, if you do this, you know, it, it helps you in a puzzle. No, it's like, no, this, this is just mandatory. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so you, uh, you go and you, there's a, this candelabra floating around. You can light it. Uh, and this exposes the butler ghost who flees back to this butler room we've been to where you can finish him off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing special. Like he, when, when, when he's in there, he's already exposed. So you just have to mm-hmm. wear him down. Uh, the conservatory is extremely fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's just very cute. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because you go in and you know it's just a, it's a room with a bunch of musical instruments on it uh and in order to make the the ghost who's a pianist uh spawn you have to go and interact with all of the uh, instruments there's like a, there's like three saxophones that are put together there's an upright bass um just a few mm-hmm. different things uh when you marimba. interact with them marimba yeah uh and it starts playing um the super mario theme song Mm-hmm. You know, and she can't help but join in, right? On the piano, <laughs> which that's I mean, how, if I was sitting at a piano, it. I would do that. If somebody started breaking yeah. that out, like, yeah, sure, okay, yep, <laughs> um, real cute. Uh, and then she does a little quiz. She plays a song from Mario Three and asks you which Mario game. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Like I was really song. hoping it was going to be random songs, yes, or this was going to be a thing because I was like, I'll play a Mario music quiz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck, man, that sounds fun. Yeah. Um. But the way you uh, you stun her um, is by setting on fire or uh, sucking up her sheet music mm-hmm. that she has. And yeah. this allows you to uh, suck her up. Yes. Uh, this was good. I also just like the idea of somebody within the continuity quizzing you about the games in the continuity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's just fun, fun meta stuff. Also fun is uh, the dining room. This is one of the more intricate, intricate encounters that you do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, where there's a, a big old fat ghost, um, he is eating at this table. Um, you light the candles. <laughs> He's eating him. what appears to be like loose entrails suspended in aspic. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very Resident Evil Seven. Yes, food. Um, <laughs> you light the the candles for him, and then you have to uh, suck away his food, which then causes waiters to bring him more food, which you then need to suck up. Um, and then that triggers uh, him into boss mode, when which he shoots fireballs at you. You dodge them until he gets tired. Yes, and then finish him off. Yeah. Multiple steps there. It's fun. I just, I like the, I like vacuuming away somebody's food. Mm -hmm. It's very Cinco. (laughs) Cinco food. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's, it's really the Cinco food tube. It's it's explicitly like, for like food and liquid vacuums is explicitly a thing that always happens in Nathan for you. (laughs) Like that is, that is weirdly just a solution that he comes up with a lot of the time. Like the chili suit. (laughs) Yeah. The chili suit. dude. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, right off of the uh, the dining room is, is the kitchen where you get your uh, your second elemental coin um, uh, where you find an icy ghost in the fridge and then you melt it with fire. Um, yeah. And this lets you grab water moats from around like faucets and, you know, wells and things like that. Mm. Yep. Uh, you head out back to the backyard, a.k.a. the boneyard, uh, <laughs> where there is a ghost dog. Uh, who is way of the samurai uh, And if you agitate him enough, a skeleton gets tired of him barking. Mm-hmm. So you have to kill the skeleton. The skeletons don't show up very often. Yeah. Like, I love, mostly I love those ghosts, things. But yeah. <laughs> sometimes there's just a skeleton. I like it. Um, and then uh, once you kill him, the ghost dog becomes vulnerable when he tries to eat the bone. Yes. Try, try, tries to gnaw on the yeah. ghost bone. Um, yes. This is not uh, the ghost dog that Luigi gets from Dark Moon on. Uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, a at some point. Yeah, he, like he gets a. It, it's a, it's just his, his his pet ghost dog whose name I forget. Uh, this is a different kind of ghost dog. Yes, um, Zoe or something. Yeah. Uh, area two ends. So when you look at the um, uh, the dog house, uh, you'll see just like mm-hmm. some lights kind of shimmering around there. You take a picture of it with your Game Boy Horror, and you'll be sucked through that into the graveyard behind the boneyard. Um, yes. and, uh, this ultimately after a couple of, after a little combat encounter, which was with just some rank and file, you'll get pulled into, uh, this pretty fun boss fight against, uh, these like shadow ghosts. Bogmire. Bogmire? Is the name of this, uh, gotcha. yeah, the name of this ghost. 
Um, yeah, and this is, there's not, like, it's pretty fun. There's mm-hmm. not tons to it. Right. Um, you know, his whole thing is that he uh, goes around uh, kind of teleporting, and he ends up, spit like, leaving these little inky trails mm-hmm. around, which then you can suck up into a ball to spit at him. Yes, and the inky trails, yeah, like, like, turn into, like, a shadow beneath these invisible ghosts that will chase after you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you suck those up, and then he's translucent. You throw the ink at him and then hit him. Yes. You know, again, kind of the puzzle content of it is a little bit, you know, ameliorated by your limited verge set. Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, it's a fun dexterity just, challenge. Like, aiming at him is not necessarily a given. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And part of that for me was being on the 3DS. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it was, I was uh, just having a rough time with the controls a little bit with Mm -hmm. the nub. Um, The uh, one thing that I I want to mention, just because we haven't mentioned it yet, is in addition to shooting up banana peels, these ghosts will oftentimes throw out the poison mushroom from Lost Levels. Yeah. I I like the inclusion. Anything with uh, Lost Levels, what I don't like is that that just like completely disables you for 30 seconds. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just it's just a way to interrupt your flow, but it takes yeah. a while. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lot of times the only obstacle yes. that you're going to have to deal with, you know. So without it, I could see it being Too not easy. really working. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's basically the mechanic. Yeah. But also, you know, walking around while you're little Luigi, <laughs> uh, it's cute. You it's know, cute. it doesn't happen that often. But yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's a it, waiting game. Yeah. I mean, it's like when, when, I, when I say it disables you, it, um, it, um, you cannot use your vacuum. Or your flashlight. Yes. Well, it's yeah, while, you while, while you're te- Yes. Oh. Yeah, a dust buster <laughs> and a little keychain flashlight. <laughs> yeah. um, once you take him down, uh, you get the club key. Right. Which allows us to go into area three. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is mostly like the upstairs kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we go outside first, out to the courtyard. Uh, there are some ghosts that are kind of hanging around in the trees and stuff. Um, when you um, interact with the birdhouse, that's just kind of that's just kind of out there conspicuously. You get your second little Mario item. This is a, a letter that was written in such haste that you cannot discern what Mario was trying to communicate. Yeah, and and spoiler, it's nothing that uh, interesting. No, no, it's just like, hey, help me, I'm Mario, <laughs> my dearest brother. I write you from yeah. the fields of Appomattox. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. The, the, um, the, I like I like the idea of Mario and Luigi being on opposite sides in the Civil War. <laughs> brother versus brother. Yeah, man. <laughs> North versus South. Like, I'm a Ross again. I'm about abolish slavery. Um. Yeah. Oh man. I'll take it. The underground so... Mario Kart track. Yep. The, um, <laughs> the, the the underground rainbow road, please. Yeah, oh, there we go. That's that's better. No. Um, oh. yeah, very nice. Um, anyway, yeah. you can't top that. Mario Luther King. I've been um, I've, I've been cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Jesus. So anyway, this will be our second two parter. Yep. Uh, 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 um, uh, but anywho, um, you go out through this area. This is a big pain to go through this over and over and over. Um, if yeah. you don't get that shortcut in the next zone, um, mm-hmm. the nice thing is you can get health from here. There are statues that consistently drop hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you can also jump down to the bottom of the well here. Yeah. To, 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 there, there's a toad cowering in an outhouse saying, you know, to terrified of things that he saw down there. Um, and you uh, go to just a room that is called the bottom of the well, which mm-hmm. is trading on goodwill that that, uh, that, that dungeon has not earned. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, yeah. Also, the toads need to stay out of the fucking toilet. Yeah. Um, when you go down here, you can stick your head into a dragon statue. Uh, mm-hmm. In order to see Mario, he's been trapped in a painting. Yeah. Uh, King Boo is admiring him. The uh, critical path, though, is to go into another uh, exit from here across the courtyard <sighs> into the, uh, like, workout room. Yeah, to the rec uh, room to fight this Charles Atlas looking guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's a there's a big uh, fucking August Durlath esque Chad ghost <laughs> that you have to take out here, <laughs> and uh, this is pretty mechanically involved. Mm-hmm. Um, there are these hanging punching bags that you have to like suck and then blow at him mm-hmm. to make him vulnerable. No, yeah. um, this is where the uh, key is. If you run on the treadmill, uh, you unlock the key to the. Oh, treadmill. I didn't try that. Yeah, I was not. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't treating this like a playground. It's the only time where you have to do it. 
Nice. You know, it's like, it's not really your fault that like you didn't do it because mm-hmm. it's a weird thing where like most of the time when you do that, you just get coins. Right. You know, right. We talk a lot about on the show about like games needing to encourage you to do the right thing mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and this, you know, does not. Yeah. The, the, the game had demonstrated that most of my efforts would be, um, something would be rewarded with something that I didn't care about. And so yeah. I scaled that back and didn't necessarily mess around with too much more. Yeah. All it would have taken to not do that was, would be how, I know this isn't like trivial to implement, but I'm saying Mm -hmm. if the game had an economy, you would have been shaking everything. Yes. Because you'd want to get that cool upgrade for your vacuum. Yeah. So if it felt like we were being petty earlier about that, like it does matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Um, also it's the only time the game does this. Yes. Like it's the, (laughs) it's the shortcut. Yeah. It, yeah. it is it is the shortcut, and every time you know I had to backtrack, you know, to go outside to the courtyard to basically take the long way around to get up to the upper floors. That was a uh, you know the just the exact right amount of friction that I started resenting it. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I saw like um, I saw that there was a locked door, you know, the for the shortcut. I was like, when the hell am I going to get that key? And it just never came around. So yeah, yeah, I didn't get it right away. Yeah, I was. It was when I was backtracking and looking for something else. Yeah, I did it. And also, so. like, if I really cared about it, if it was that big of a problem, I would have looked it up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's also friction, though, right? Yes. Yeah. You know. Um. So you can head upstairs from here. Uh, go into the tea room. Um, or these panels that you flip that like, you walk on the ceiling. This mm-hmm. is also a really weird, like, kind of underused it's, mechanic. It's like in two rooms. It's here and in the cellar. It's really strange. Yeah. You know, as, as a thing, it's kind of cool, mm-hmm. you know, but it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. I feel like maybe they they came up with the idea for this. They implemented it in a couple of rooms and then tried a couple of others and it wasn't fun. And they mm-hmm. just didn't entirely scrap the mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, the big thing you do here after you clear the ghost in this room is get the frost token. So now mm-hmm. you can make the third element. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the disparate element of frost as compared to water. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And uh, the three, the three um, states of water, fire, you know, water, yeah, and ice. Yeah. The, um, oh, so you go to Nana's room, uh, and Nana mm-hmm. is sitting in a rocker and she's, she, she's knitting. Um, and in order to, uh, in order to agitate her and get her to expose her heart, you need to scatter yarn balls around. Which is yeah. a cruel thing to do. She has arthritis. Like, don't make her bend down to grab that stuff. She seems extremely mean to me. Yeah. I was not in favor of this grandma. No. Um, and then you uh, you hit her with the the yarn balls. Oh, of course. To teach her a lesson. That's what you do in this game. Yeah, yeah you teach her a lesson. Like, you like yarn, do you? Um, <laughs> like then, Ben Stiller uh, in Happy these... Gilmore. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so uh, you take her out. Um, there's an upstairs bathroom where there's a woman go showering. Um, <laughs> she says she doesn't want cold things you had to smash her with frost um i no longer had frost at this point which yeah. was annoying this is the first I, time i had to backtrack for an element yeah to go back so it's it's weird like i would say four out of five times the element that you need is present in the room where you have to use it yeah but that 20 yeah, percent yeah. where it's not and it's just kind of relying on you kind of logically following from one room you know like where, where it makes the assumption that you would still be carrying that uh it is again just a little bit of unwelcome friction in this game that is primarily slight you yes. know yeah. yeah yeah just kind of unnecessary yes padding mm-hmm. yeah. uh there's the billiards um, room you, you, you got a yep. you got the cincinnati kid the cincinnati kid here that's not that's not yeah. that's a that's a poker movie cole come on not a pool movie. His name is like Banks Trickshot or something like that. He has a very direct name. <laughs> right. Like uh, yeah. Tri- Trixie Doom Q. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I like about him, so he, he breaks, you know, and, and then the balls, they just kind of fly in every direction because they are ghost balls. <laughs> they, they, they're they not like, they they don't hold to gravity like physical balls would. So you have to grab them and blast them with them, uh, with, with them to make them vulnerable. Yeah, this was definitely the point at which I was getting a little sick of just grabbing balls and hitting the ghost. With I them. mean, they did they did basically two of them in a row with Nana and Trix Banksy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a little bit a little bit unfortunate, but it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the next room there, the projector. That's fun. Where mm-hmm. you turn on the, uh, the turn on this projector and it makes all these gravity ghosts appear. Yeah, there. Once you've done that uh, in shadow, right there from the projector. Um, this gets you Mario's glove. Yes. 
Um, and you like, I think it, like when you get to area three, you're able, like, basically you can go right away to the end of the fortune teller, uh, to get mm-hmm. her to appear. You have to like light her candles and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there's a fire thing in her room. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the twins room, uh, this is the, the this is fun. Uh, you go there uh, again, like these are like toddlers as opposed to the baby Chauncey or whatever. You wake them up mm-hmm. by spinning their, they've got like, so they've got a mobile on the, uh, on the ceiling, uh, with some airplanes, you spin it around. They want to play hide and seek. So they make you leave the room and then come back in. And there are, um, crates laying around and, in order to find them, you just vacuum at the crate and see which ones shake. And mm-hmm. then you go and then you go and touch that. And then they come out and they're real angry because you cheated. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this ends up being like there's two of them. One that's up in the, the air, like mm-hmm. on a little fake airplane. And one of them running around on the ground. Yeah. The, um, the, the airplane one's a real bummer because it drops bombs. Yeah. And bombs yeah, don't is, just is... explode and do damage. They also light you on fire, which kind of yeah. uh, staggers you for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. This, this I found, you know, on the curve of this game kind of challenging, mm-hmm. you know, not yeah. super challenging, but on the curve of the game. Um, it's worth it, though, for Mario's stink ass shoe. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, one of the things I really love about this is going into the astral hall um, <laughs> where you light up these candles that summons these ghosts. When you clean them up, uh, you get this little like rainbow road that goes out to a telescope where you look through this telescope. It causes the room to fall apart. <laughs> it's it's, it's to the observatory. Cool space. Yeah, the observatory. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you look through the telescope um, and like I, I, I thought now the, the game couldn't be telling me to do what I think it's telling me to do. <laughs> but we can we should we must blow up the moon yeah exactly yeah yeah you suck up the moon <laughs> you you you, uh, you grab you, a you shooting a star. star yeah and shoot at the moon yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, blow up the moon um it's great mm-hmm. uh and then you go grab one of mario's invincibility stars yes um i could have used a little bit more of this surreality Same. like this is really cool mm-hmm. yes like it a lot um yep. we already mentioned madame clairvoya uh the mm-hmm. uh <laughs> the fortune teller after you get all five of the items i think we i think we outlined how you got all of those she says all right now suck me up like i'm willing to go back into my painting i have served i have served my purpose she's a turncoat she is helping mm-hmm. you capture all of her friends uh, quizzling yeah um and she the only thing she really get from this uh, from doing this is she says that um, i'm sure you get a key yeah. as well but she says something like um you know bowser might actually be behind this i see bowser yes yeah um oh. Um, this is another boo gate. You have to get mm-hmm. 20 boos. Um, once you do this, uh, EGAD tells you to examine the jar the poltergust didn't find anything in before. I didn't know what this meant. Me either. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did not know. I just kind of had to like walk around a bit. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I just, I went to the safari room, which like the safari room is on a, like, on a floor you didn't necessarily go to a lot before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, you know, up, up upstairs, but yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know necessarily what uh, what Gad was was talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what you talking about, Gad? <laughs> um, there, um, you just uh, anger these three mounted heads to fight uh, banana ghosts. No mm-hmm. big deal. Um, however, uh, once you go out to the balcony here, this opens up the way to the upstairs balcony, not the courtyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, your boo radar starts going nuts because there's tons <laughs> of boos out here, I love this. and they gestalt into a boss of yeah. the Bulasses. I love that they're just flying in a circle like it's a uh, Super mm-hmm. Mario World. Yeah, yeah, good job. Um, and the Bulasses, it uh, stands to reason. Uh, that's exactly what it sounds like. It is a gigantic boo, um, mm-hmm. and this is actually pretty clever. You grab the boo with your vacuum, and there are two. Um, ice sculptures of unicorns on either side of the uh on other side of the arena you have to drag the boo and pop it on the unicorn's horn yeah yeah or just um duck around the uh unicorn's horn it will pop itself yes like if it's bouncing Mm -hmm. this makes it explode into other boos Mm -hmm. um which you then need to freeze with the ice uh element I wasn't sure why um, you had to freeze them. Like I, like I understand they needed another, they needed a twist because you couldn't just go around sucking all of them up. But it, yeah, d- didn't make any sense. All these other booze I've been, I've been pulling down. I've just been sucking up booze left and yeah. right. I, I just like the idea of a frozen ghost. <laughs> it's very good. You know? Yeah, it's like ooh, <laughs> that's scary and good. Um, the uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, this so. ends up being just a little bit frustrating. Um, just because, you know, when you, when you pop, when you pop the big ghost, like right at the start, there are a bunch of them and it's pretty easy to hit. The actual mm-hmm. effective range of your frost spray, and I guess of all the sprays, is relatively, is relatively low. Um, the uh, gestalt boo, the boo losses get smaller as you suck away as mm-hmm. constituent parts. When there are just a handful of these, of these ghosts left, they're actually like way too nimble and they, they move faster than you. So you have to yeah. like goad them into flying in to attack you, um, yeah. in order to get, in order to get close enough. This is where I died because I was unable to, because I came into this with like 50 health, something like that mm-hmm. already down low, uh, which was you know my bad, but nothing else had been hard before this. Um, and yeah. I got, I got down to like the last boo and I couldn't get him and he just headbutted me until I died. So yeah, a little bit of a bummer. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, and work on your gaming. Yeah, no, no, get good. Um, cool. Yeah, get, get, uh, work on it. Just uh, practice every day a little bit of get video game. Yeah. Until you're good at video game. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like it's my job or anything. Yeah. No, I know, but you'll get there someday, buddy. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> yeah, th- th- this is annoying. Like, I found yeah. this obnoxious, too. Mm-hmm. Um, once you eventually suck up all the little boos, uh, you get the diamond key. Um, this causes or just happens uh, that yeah. lightning strikes the house um, and the power goes out. So what this is doing is it's taking all the hallways that you previously thought were safe mm-hmm. because the lights were on and stuff and turns the light out and it ups the random encounter yeah. uh, thing to where there are more kinds. Um, in addition to the ghosts that come down from the ceiling to try to startle you, there are ghosts that pop out in a bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, like, the, these things have been added a little bit, um, you know, like starting in like late area too, I think, like when you get down in the basement. Um Yeah. Yeah, but the bowling ones are a bit of a problem. Um, and then there are also yes. the ones that will uh, that drop bombs as well. The ceiling ones will begin dropping bombs. Yeah. But yeah, okay. no, you're just flooded with these ghosts as you go back through the darkened version of the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the idea is to make it way back to the um, the breaker room. Mm-hmm. But you can, you don't have the key anymore, yeah. which I do not know, yeah. uh, which is obnoxious. Mm-hmm. So you, have, so you um, go all the way down there. The basement not, is not necessarily easy to get to. Then you have to go up and discern that you have to go to the wardrobe room, which, like, we were there before. Like, we cleared it out. It was fine. No, Uncle Grimly is here now. Well, he, he got to tell you at some point. Like, I started Does heading he? down to the yeah. circuit room, and he goes, hey, there's one of these ghosts that only hangs out in the dark. His name is Uncle Grimly. Uh, now is a golden opportunity to get him. I did not get that. Yeah. Ah, uh, That might be a 3DS. A, a, did you end up playing on 3DS or on? 3DS. I can't yeah. recall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he, he popped up and told me that. Maybe I wandered around too much. Who knows? I, I don't know. Um, but he's there's not a whole lot to him. You stay faced away from him. He mm-hmm. his heart. Uh, when you do this, you get the key to the breaker room. And you could head down to the breaker room. Yes, uh, here. Yep, and it sets the uh, it sets the house back to normal. Um, mm-hmm. Although, like those more difficult ghosts that were really common here, they're going to get more common um, yeah. in these new areas that you go to. Um, mm-hmm. So you're in the basement here. You get a key for the cellar, which is right across the hallway here. Um, this is an area where there's like piles of ash and dust on the floor, and you have to shake these barrels to get ghosts out. Inexplicably, this also is a room that has the gravity flip um, icons mm-hmm. as well. Which, what that does is when you're backtracking, you don't have to suck up the dust. Yes. It's so weird. It's like the only <laughs> time the gravity flip is really used. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, I mean, it's used other times too, but it's the only, you know, one of the very few times. Yeah. And you, uh, yeah, it's like if you backtrack, just go up on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. You know, but you never well, have to really do anything from up there. No, no, it's, it's uh, not it's like really there are, there are only like, I mean, it seems like it would make sense to use in the boo hunt. Like, oh yeah, yeah. just like sometimes the thing you need to get is on the ceiling. Like, you know, it's a, it's a light, it's a light fixture that you can't reach from the yeah. floor. So you have to get up there, but it's just not, not necessarily the case. Um, yeah. Uh, you go to the clockwork room. Um, this is where there are, uh, all of these clocks uh, you have to shake to wake up these ghost toy soldiers that have, mm-hmm. uh, wind up keys yeah. in their back. This is hard because you're fighting three things at once. Yeah. And that's like, not something you really do, uh, yeah. very much. Uh, yeah. These things ganged up on me. This was my second death. Yeah. They're frustrating. Uh, yeah. these guys. Um, and the, uh, just cause the, the real estate, you know, the, the zoom 
yeah, unless you don't yeah. have tons of room mm-hmm. uh, it, this. yeah and also like you know when you are sucking them like uh, you, know, you can get all of them in one go but they will head mm-hmm. in different directions actually yeah. um and that will cause that will that will cause your uh you know concentration to break and then they're gonna go away and you have to start over again so like you have to like single them out and take them one by one or at least get one get rid of one of them when there are two they don't seem to behave like that yeah and yeah. You, you could always get multiple ghosts at once uh when mm-hmm. you do so you get a heart yes so uh you'll get you'll get health mm-hmm. yeah um, uh but this elevator opens to the playhouse <laughs> that feels like a direct uh code veronica thing to me <laughs> Wait, Code, was Code Veronica in 2001 or was that in 2000? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember the years things come out. Oh. I don't, I don't do that. It's not, not really my, my thing as a games guy. Oh, yeah. It's, it, I, 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 got, I got you covered, buddy. It was in February of 2000. So it's possible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it feels like that to me. This feels mm-hmm. like going up into the, uh, in the Ashford attic. Yeah. Um, but you uh, go up here on the roof. The ghosts are having this little campfire party. <laughs> you fuck them up. No, of course. Uh, I like that. There's, again, there's, I think that these are primarily the mask guys. That's a that's a fun mm-hmm. encounter. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nice. uh, yeah. Um, and also, you can go to the armory, uh, which feels like mm-hmm. a direct call to Resident Evil Four, even though Resident Evil Four would come out five years after this. Um, yes. <laughs> no, there there are lots of suits of armor. Uh, some of them are wielding weapons, uh, and you have to be real careful when you interact with them because the mace, the mace that they're carrying, will drop on you and do damage to you. Okay. You do it from behind. Yes. It's like the puzzle here. Like shake them from behind, so you don't <laughs> puzzle. Get hit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it, it's you know first time I got hit, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, okay, yeah. Um, you can go down to the uh, dropping down this chimney. Uh, here we'll get you uh, on the roof. We'll get you to the sealed room, which is full of treasure. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a secret room. I had been trying to get into this room. It's boarded up. Yes, uh, a lot. Every time so, I got like an element, I tried down this door. Yeah, I, I mean, so it's it's boarded up with wood. You would think that fire would do it. <laughs> I would think that. I, and getting this was <laughs> disappointing to me because I did not want treasure. Yeah, just um, I, there's yeah yeah the, the, there's, there's a rooms. key that you need here, but. Oh yeah, th- this one is necessary. The other one is uh, uh, just for fun hidden room mm-hmm. where there's a mouse trap you can take a picture of and get sucked into a room, mm-hmm. um, and it's just treasure. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, yeah. Critical path here will take you to the guest room. Uh, this feels a little bit like a uh, like an exorcist kind of uh, kind of pastiche here a little bit. Uh, yeah. cause you go in and th- the room is upside down, uh, you know, all the furniture is stuck to the ceiling and there's this angry girl who is like screaming at you because she's trying to sleep. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's a real mixed thing and you have to splash her with water to wake her up. Yep. Uh, so you have to go get some water if you don't have it. I don't mm-hmm. think there's water in this room. No, no. There's a bathroom nearby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, uh, you splash her, um, you know, and then the room flips to normal. Uh, when you leave and there's a little chest in it, you can get, get to leave mm-hmm. and come back. The chest is on the ceiling previously. Nope. And I was like, oh, surely I can walk on the ceiling. Nope. nope. <laughs> it's not like they established that mechanic in two rooms and then abandoned it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had to do the, uh, the pipe room after this. Um, and we, we just keep saying you head to the room. That's because you're getting a key and then the room you go to. Blows. Right. It's, it's, a reminder. it's, it's pointing it. Like, like, like yeah. occasionally when you get to a new area, there will, there will be multiple rooms that are open. But oftentimes it is directly pointing you from one to the other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh the pipe room is another instance of actual plumbing that you're doing um because <laughs> there's like a little river of sewage um to a little pipe valve uh you can use your frost gun to freeze the sewage so you can walk over it and then when you turn the valve it stops this water flow that is hiding a chest yes yep um which you get which allows you to go into cold storage uh, where this room is frozen over Mm -hmm. um and there's this frozen mountain climber down here in the corner um (laughs) you thaw him out uh, with fire and then he attacks by shooting uh, ice waves at you yeah while icicles fall from the ceiling yeah getting uh getting hit by the ice in this is basically the exact same thing as being grabbed by a ghost yeah Yeah. shake it off or being grabbed by the ghoulies Mm -hmm. rare what are you Uh, doing rare uh, you know, it's, they're uh, they're so lowbrow, mm. unlike us. Um, they uh, so you go into the studio next. Um, this is like a pottery studio. Um, uh, oh, so we, so the the, the 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 ceramic the ceramic thing was 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 earlier where you play a whack a ghost. Oh. Yeah, 
Oh, that, that, gotcha. that was I off the armory. We, we yeah, it, it, I, yeah I, we, I combined it in a bullet point with the armory because the, the, those those rooms gotcha. are basically the same thing. That that was the gotcha, uh, the, gotcha. the ghost who challenged you to a little game to uh, to freeze yeah. them when you popped out of different pots. Yeah, that yeah, yeah it does whack whack them all there. I forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. This is the painting room. This is the yeah. the uh, penultimate mini boss. Yeah, this is this is the endurance test. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, where he sends waves of enemies to you. He's been painting other ghosts and he mm-hmm. sends them at you. Uh, just like, hey, fight three of all these things. Yes. Um, which is tricky. Like, this is kind of the gameplay climax of the game. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, and these are just enemies that you've been fighting throughout the rest of the game, you know, like, and all of them are going to be coming at you, you know, like in waves of three, which is more than you've generally been facing. And you have to mm-hmm. do all of them, all, all of them in a row. Um, they felt pretty generous with hearts to me here, though, so it wasn't that big mm-hmm. of a deal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but when you when when you clear all these ghosts, so this uh, the, the, this portrait ghost is named Vincent Van Gore. Uh, I checked; he mm-hmm. he had his ear, he had both ears, which seems like a a, a real missed opportunity. Um, but but he is shocked because like oh, I will get you my art, blah blah blah, and then he sends the ghost after you, and he is shocked that you capturing the ghost ruined his paintings. Which I'm very happy that there's like a consistent <laughs> there, there's consistent rules for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna turn it back into paintings, but yeah, it's fine. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, and you get to be a painting. It's like cat lady. You're gonna be art. <laughs> um, so if you get enough booze, you have to get forty. Uh, at this point, this is the final thing. You can go mm-hmm. uh, into the uh, you get the key, which goes into the shrine where Mario's painting is kept. Mm-hmm. Um, you get the forty booze. You can go in there, um, and King Boo pulls you into this painting. Yep. With uh, Mario and Bowser, like gigantic Bowser. Yeah, but it's like a Bowser suit <laughs> that well, Boo controls. We don't know controls. that initially. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Initially, it, it's a it's a great fake out because oh, yeah. <laughs> you just think it's Bowser. Yeah. Uh, until you figure out the puzzle and you hit him, and then the head comes off and <laughs> Boo's head comes out, and it's great. Yeah. It's really surreal. Yeah. Um, his uh, head floats around shooting fireballs at you while mm-hmm. it's like disconnected. <laughs> and when you get King Boo like low enough on health, he doesn't put the head on right. <laughs> It's yeah, on backwards. It's great. Yeah. Like, it, and he kind of runs around because he can't see until he straightens it out. Tons of charm in this boss mm-hmm. fight. Yeah, the you know your verb set in this game is so limited. Like, all you're doing is like he spits out these spiked balls. Mm-hmm. You grab one, and you throw it back at him. Yeah. Um, they have heavier physics than other things you've been sucking up. Yeah. Like I didn't figure this out for a minute because you have to be pretty close to them to suck them up. Mm-hmm. Um, additionally, um, they are rigged to explode uh, yes. after a short amount of time, so you have to be very quick. Yep. Um, but the clever thing you do also, in addition to this, is uh, if you trick Bowser into walking over any of the, like, torches, mm-hmm. they'll explode into hearts. Yeah. I mean, this is a good end boss fight, I think. Mm-hmm. Which um, is, like, I not don't something feel that like, it never happens yeah. in a Mario game that an end boss fight is good. No, I think they tend to be kind of shitty. Yeah. Um, this one is really good. Yeah. I think. Um, just really charming and really weird and surreal. Mm-hmm. Um, you eventually take out King Boo and you suck him up. Um, at this point, uh, reducing his health as he's outside of the uh, the, the costume. Mm-hmm. It's and a lot, too. Then, he uh, has 500 HP, and, like, the most we've seen before is, like, in the hundreds. You know, yeah, 100, 200. The, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a 300 boo. Yeah, yeah. Um, after you do this, Gad congratulates you, uh, takes down the Mario painting, and runs the machine backwards, which has to hurt. <laughs> yep. It looks painful. I mean, and also it sounds like Mario is having a terrible time as he it is being. It sounds really scary. Yeah. This is like, what if he came, God, if he came back wrong with that guy from the filth? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> just he yeah, broke, like, uh, he, he broke out of the page and they tried to three dimensional. Dimension yep, secret original. He's yeah. all floppy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Help. <laughs> the, the, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that'll be in the creepy pasta. <laughs> uh, well. um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's like kind of the end of the game. Um, yeah. You get your little epilogue where Gad says you can use all that treasure you found to build a new house. And I mm-hmm. spend 500 million to get like a, a one room shack. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. I got rank C. So, so it was like a big sized house, you know, like a two story with a couple of it wasn't the bait, the, the gigantic mansion, though. It seems yeah. it seemed like Luigi and the entire family could live there. But yeah, there, there are several different ranks. Yes. Uh, to this, but it's just looking at, at money. Yes.
that's it. That's, that's Luigi's Mansion. That's Luigi's Mansion. Like, this was a pretty short episode and also kind of weird because it really was like a listing of the different rooms and the stuff that was cool about them and these different encounters. But, like, it's a very slight game and that is to its credit. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, good. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a snack. Yeah. Um, and that's great. Uh, a snack is awesome. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just want a, like, a tasty treat. Mm-hmm. And this is this is a fudge-covered Nutter Butter. Of a video game. Like, I played this in three sittings, mm-hmm. I think, uh, that were, like, pretty substantial. If you, you know, for a couple hours each, uh, you could sit down and just, like, play a half hour of this before bed for a week and have a pretty good time. Yeah. You know, half hour, 45 minutes before bed. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, get charmed, get charmed to sleep. Yeah. With Luigi's Mansion. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit of a bummer. You know, I, I think that the the ideal version of this would just be a Switch port where, where you have two functioning analog sticks. Like, yeah, oh yeah. I, I came to this having spent, you know, the most time with Luigi's Mansion 3, which just controls very, very naturally compared to yeah. this, you know? So, like, the limited input in that regard is kind of a bummer. They make affordances, but it's not perfect. But, again, the, the mechanics are so limited, and it kind of asks so little of you that that awkwardness is not that huge of a hurdle to get over. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, again, every on every aspect, this would be worse if it was longer, yes. I think. It wouldn't be damned. Like, you make mm-hmm. this an hour longer. It's not like it's a bad game. But right. I really, really appreciate the idea of the amount of, like, Nintendo-style craft and mm-hmm. charm in a bite-sized experience. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and it's a... Uh, yeah. I shit. mean, and the, like, the, this would also be specifically, like, I don't know, if I was trying to show somebody, like, the, the you know, what good animation looked like, I would use this as a reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would I would love it uh, to have a, a, a new frame plus. Mm-hmm. Like have Dan Floyd do an episode on the the animation in this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I'm a patron of his, and hmm. I should suggest it. Yeah. Because he puts out calls for suggestions frequently, and I'm like, yeah, this game, the animation, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, not, hor- not horny for another one just yet, but I like, again, I threw a fun grenade into the future. Yeah. Like sometime down the road, I'll play Luigi's Mansion 3 and have a great time. Yeah. So it's excited. good. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Yep. Uh, next episode. So if you have things to say about Luigi's Mansion or any of the other games we're doing this month, hit us up at duckfeed.tv slash contact by the 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, and those games are Legend of Grimrock 2, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, or Wolfenstein, The New Colossus. Yes. Or this one, too. Um, oh, yeah. If you have thoughts about maze games, uh, which are Hypnospace Outlaw, Celeste, and the Resident Evil 3 remake, uh, which is weird because we're calling for responses on that and the game is not out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so don't respond yet please i mean you can have your speculations like the demos out and stuff but uh you know well that's that's wait until you played it yeah don't don't, don't, don't write in about the demo please yeah yeah no no, no need <laughs> um the uh yeah but uh do that and uh yeah we'll we'll read those in the uh, dispatch episode mm-hmm. for this month yeah um, trying to think, uh, so on this feed, there was a, uh, an announcement episode that we put out just kind of talking about our plans for how we're going to replace live episodes, uh, this, this mm-hmm. year. Um, so, you know, in lieu of us kind of recapitulating all that, all that information, go listen to that for specifics, but we are going to be, you know, generally here trying to replace those live events with virtual things that will get you some of the enjoyment without having to risk your well-being or the well-being of your loved ones. Yeah. Or for us without having to risk our well-being. Yes. Every time I've gotten on a plane, I've always gotten sick. Yes. And now that sickness could be, you know. Yeah. yeah. And really horribly. So uh, not doing that. Um, but we're with you in this time of, uh, of change and uncertainty mm-hmm. and stuff. Yes. We're doing our best. Um, and we know you are too. And we appreciate you. And we want you to stay safe. So please, please do. Yeah. Um, if you are able to, you know, we understand there's a lot of economic uh, upheaval right now. But, you know, if you're able to support us by going to Patreon, uh, you get lots of content um, mm-hmm. uh, there. I think between the last episode and this one, we put out that pack of episodes, uh, the quarantine pack of uh, premium stuff from 2019. All that's yours uh, just back here on the WAF feed. Um, yeah. And that shows you kind of some of the offerings there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it is entertainment value, you know, entertainment dollars are going to have to be stretched further. Yes. You know, probably in this new world. And we think that we give a good value for that, but it's yeah. up to you to decide it's there if you'd like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it. I think so. 
Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, until next time, what should they watch out for, Cole? Yabu yabu.